All righty, welcome back to another episode of the Law with Lawson. Now, now you know, normally in the control room is Eric, but today we got Melissa back there running the boards for us. Um, and, and, and we're going to continue on with our, um, our my discussion uh, of corruption in Hawaii, right? So last week we talked about that Miski indictment. And, and this week, um, um, you know, it was out in the papers. Uh, Civil Beat did an article, and I think it may have been in other news that the feds are back in town. What I mean by that, feds have never really left town, right? Uh, uh, our local uh, U.S. Attorney's Office, Kenji Price, uh, is our U.S. Attorney here in Hawaii, indicted Miski and his little crew, uh, Miski Enterprises, right, under a RICO conspiracy last week. But it was Michael Wheat, who was from San Diego. I call, uh, and, and his assistant U.S. Attorneys, along with the FBI from California, that came in that did the indictment with Louis uh, and Catherine K. Aloha. And now remember that indictment has spun into all kinds of investigations. Keith County Sherrill uh, is under investigation. Uh, the uh, city uh, attorney, attorney for the city, Donna Leon, right? Got a target letter under investigation. Their um, prosecutor, uh, Chad Sopolo, I think is how you pronounce his name, uh, who's been on leave, pay leave, along with Keith and Donna. Uh, we've been paying them. Um, ever since they received their target letters and have not been uh, actively working their jobs uh, because they're under investigation. And so what does it mean for the feds to come back from Michael Weed? I call them the Avengers because, you know, when I was <laughs> when I went down and watched that Kealoha trial <laughs> and I sat through every day of it. And um, so, so, you know, Michael Weed, I can't, I, mean, I can't remember the names, but I gave them each like, like Michael Weed is like Captain America, right? And then they had this one guy, he did the closing argument. And he, and so remember it was the prosecution against five defense lawyers. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Kaloha case in a second, but it was like five, um, actually I'm talking about it now, but we're gonna get into more of, of all this corruption going on in Hawaii and how it could relate to this Kaloha case, but anyway. So yeah, in closing arguments, you had you know the, the U.S. Attorney's Office, Captain Wheat and his Avengers going against five defense lawyers, and in in the closing arguments, man, um, I can I, I do not remember the name of the assistant U.S. Attorney who was there uh, uh, helping Captain Wheat and his team, but he he was like the Hulk. You ever see uh, any of the Avengers when they when they tell Hulk to go and just smash smash Hulk, right? He was smashing them. So anyway. Uh, so they're back in town. So what does that mean? Keep in mind, you got Miski got indicted and his enterprise got indicted uh, last week or two weeks ago. And then this past week, um, last week, obviously, um, it's reported that Captain Wheat and his Avengers are back in town, right? And so what does that mean for corruption in Hawaii? And hopefully, uh, like I said, um, they get to the bottom of all this corrupt crap that's been going on for years. And, you know, I said this last week, man, you know, Miski and them couldn't exist had it not been uh, for people in high ranking places. You don't, you know, you, you don't do some of the things they're accused of doing. And we're going to talk a little bit about this uh, next week because I'm going to continue on with and bring you an update on, you know, some of the allegations in the Miski case. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the death penalty. Uh, you know, how does that work? Uh, and should it be allowed to work here in Hawaii, even though it's the federal government bringing a death penalty, Hawaii's outlawed a death penalty uh, since 1957. So anyway, let's get back to it. And so, you know, um, again, man, this goes back uh, to like two th the mid 2000s. And I'm gonna, t I'm gonna bring you a little bit up to date, you know, re give you a little refresher course in the Kealoha corruption trial, and then how that kind of spawned off into some of these other things. Uh, to kind of give you an indication on why it is that, that uh, you're going to, I believe you're going to be seeing more indictments against Keith County Sherrill, sure, maybe others. Uh, and we'll get to that. So, you know, they only give me a half hour here uh, on, on Think Tech. They said, so you got to get it in, Ken, a half hour. Uh, and that's, you know, for me, y'all know I like to, to, to talk and give it to you raw. So I'm going to feed this law to you raw. And so let's go on to the next slide, right? So, so here's what happens, right? And I, I don't know, so, you know, I watch uh, some of these cable news shows and there's been this commercial with Tom Selleck. Remember Tom used to play Magnum P.I. here in Hawaii, but he's doing these commercials for, uh, 
reverse mortgages. And I didn't know what a reverse mortgage was, so I got involved in this Kealoha case but real quick because they tell me I only have a few minutes. So, so real quick, here's how this starts. Uh, in 2009, Kat K. Aloha, uh, and obviously Louis, Louis K. Aloha was married. Louis became the chief of police, which is in, you know, we'll talk about that in future shows too. You know, how does he, how did he jump from being a police captain all the way to the chief of police? And at the same time, Catherine is working for the city and county of Honolulu, right? And the environmental protection part of, of right? She had to sign off on all this real stuff. Um, Right, and I think she got that appointment through Mufi, who, who wants to be the mayor again. But uh, all right, so let me let me stay on point. Y'all gonna get me distracted. So much corruption, and so anyway, so people kind of question that, but that's not for this show. Right? How did Louis become? You know, what was was there uh, what they call a quid pro quo? Y'all heard that, <laughs> right? This for that. Cat becomes this environmental uh, uh, protection head of that that department, um, where she has to sign off on, on all these places that the rail is going to go. That they have been, uh, uh, they meet whatever uh, state requirements they are for the rail to be built in these particular areas. And at the same time, Louis gets to become chief of police. So you know that uh, again. So at that point, let's go to the next slide, um, if we can. Well. And don't pay attention to that slide. I went too fast. But anyway, leave it, leave it up there, Melissa. So, so what happens though is, is that uh, Gerard Proana, who is uh, Catherine's uncle, um, had an apartment, had, had a condo that where his first son was born. He, over the years, he lost the condo, and he was helping his elderly mother and father out. Um, uh, in the in the early in the late '90s and early 2000s, so he's living at home with mom, and at some point, uh, the condo was up for sale. Gerard's father passed away, so now it's just Gerard at home taking care of his his his, his, his mother. We call her Grandma Puana, uh, as Catherine's grandmother, uh, and again Gerard is her uncle. And so Gerard sees that the uh, condo where his first son was was born at uh, is up for sale. He goes to to and tells Kat, you know, I saw that the um, condo's up for sale. You know, I really would like to purchase it, but I just can't afford it. So Kat comes up with this idea and she goes to, to Grandma Puana and says, look, you know, I know how Gerard can get that apartment. I mean, that condo, you can take out a mortgage on your house and we can purchase the condo with that. And, and grandma's like, no, I'm not taking out a mortgage on the house. I promised my husband, your grandfather, Kat, that whenever I pass, you know, the, the, the family house will be uh, sold and there will be an, enough for all of our children uh, to have uh, uh, from, from our, you know, our will to take away and, and have a better life. So I'm not going to put any mortgage on the condo. So that doesn't deter Kat. And if you, you know, so Kat's undeterred. So next thing she knows, you know, she comes back with this reverse mortgage broker to grandma. And she says, look, if you take out this reverse mortgage, Louie and I, we can buy Gerard his condo. Louie and I need to redo our house. You know, he's a chief of police now. And in six months, after we get our house uh, upgraded, we're going to get a second mortgage on our house and then pay back the reverse mortgage. And so you, we, in other words, grandma, we're only gonna be borrowing this money from you for six months. After six months, Louie and I are gonna pay it off back. So somehow um, they talk grandma into doing this, not Gerard, but Kat talks grandma into doing this. She gets the reverse mortgage. And, and a couple of years later, um, grandma finds out that the reverse mortgage is not being paid. In fact, nothing's been paid. And so she writes Kat a letter saying, look, you know, I've been trying to call you. I want this, uh, you know, this mortgage taken off of, of my property. You said you was going to pay it back. You haven't. Uh, each time I try to call you, you won't answer your phone. It goes to voicemail. Uh, you've been avoiding me, et cetera. And so she, she writes Kat a letter basically saying, look, if you don't pay us back, this is like three years later. If you don't do what you promised, you're going to leave me no choice. But they had to sue you. Uh, Cause I cannot, you know, leave our property in this condition. So next thing, you know, instead of Kat just saying, grandma, you know what? I messed up. I can't afford it right now. What have you? Um, she writes this and you can see it on your screen, right? This is just portions and the prosecutor, Captain Wheat 
in the in the trial that went on last summer where Cat and Louie and other three defendants were prosecuted for setting up Gerard Puano. These were some of the excerpts from Cat's letter back to grandma. Remember, grandma's wrote to Cat and said, hey, Cat, you know, I don't want to sue you, but I will. You got to get this stuff taken care of. So instead of Cat doing the right thing, she, she sends back all these threatening stuff uh, in this letter, right? What does it say? Uh, I've never, will never, or would never borrow, take, or even request to borrow any money from Florence Puana. This is her grandmother, right? And they will rule the day that they decided to state these twisted lines. So she threatens her own grandmother. Grandmother ain't done nothing to her, but be nice to her. All right, so let's go on to the next slide. So, so what happens? So grandma and Gerard Seward, and 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 here's the part, because everybody kept wondering, why in the hell would Cat and Louie claim that this guy, Gerard Perwana, why would they say he stole their mailbox? Why, why would they set him up? I mean, what do they get out of it, right? So here's what happens. Um, they sued Cat, right? And so Cat's lawyer, they start finding all this dirt on Cat when they're doing the civil suit to try to get her to pay the reverse mortgage. And so Cat knows it. So, you know, Cat's, if you ever get sued, you may be taken down on what they call a deposition, right? Deposition, you know, the judge isn't in the room, but the lawyer that's on the other side suing you can ask you any questions under oath. So there's like a court reporter in the room taking down everything you say under oath, or if you sue somebody, right, and you want to take their deposition, you want to find out what they're going to say before trial starts. That's what the purpose of the deposition is. It's, it's what's called discovery. I want to discover what evidence I can before the trial starts so I can use it to help in my case. And so you, you, if you sue somebody, normally you, you depose them, take their deposition. So cats getting the deposition taken. The same day the cats getting the deposition taken, um, is when they start, they, they decide that they're going to have to set up, maybe not the same day, but this is when part of the plan to set up Gerard went in the action because they had to at least um, try to make him look bad in order to protect Kat from being found out to be a fraud for stealing grandma's money, right? Um, and getting into that bank account. And so that was a catalyst. This civil suit was the reason why. And I don't have time to get into it all. But this was the reason why uh, Kat and Louie and others decided to set Gerard up. And so what they decided to do, and the mistake they made was this. Remember the deposition that Kat was at? This was in June of 2013. Uh, and that deposition, um, it was held at a, a, a big office building downtown. And so grandma was there, Gerard was there. When they're getting ready to leave, um, Bobby Wynn, who was a police officer that was also involved in setting up Gerard Puana, who was also convicted uh, in this case last year, walks up to Grandma Puana. Grandma Puana knew uh, Bobby Wynn because he had been married to Kat's um, niece. I know this is getting complicated. So what kind of soap opera is this, Lawson? So anyway, so this part is important. Grandma couldn't remember what color car that Gerard drove because Bobby Wynn asked her at that deposition. You know, he was downstairs, they were downstairs in the lobby and Gerard wasn't around. He was out, he went out to get the car. So Bobby sneaks over to grandma and says, hey, what color car did Gerard drive? And she says, white. Actually, he drove a silver car, okay? And so Bobby gets the car color wrong because grandma made the mistake. And so what the reason why that's important is because on the night of, of uh, June 22nd, I mean, June 13th, is when Kat claims, and you all saw the video, if you did not show it to you at another time, Kat and Louie claim somebody stole their mailbox. Now you see the mailbox right there on the screen. They claim that, that somehow um, the mailbox was stolen at that point. Just taken. And they had this white car on videotape drive up and somebody gets out the car, takes the mailbox, puts it, comes right off. Why right? they didn't need no screwdriver? They just flop it right off as if somebody had purposely kept it there. So, gets in the car and drives away. Next thing you know, they they they, they claim that Gerard um, set them up by uh, 
not set them up, but Gerard is the one who stole the mailbox. Gerard gets arrested. And for and you know, he he's charged with stealing the chief of police and the high, the second highest ranking prosecutor's office mailbox. And what happened was Gerard went to see his public defender, Ali Silver, and he kept telling Ali Silver, look, I'm innocent. And Ali started believing him. Uh, not that he never did, but you know, he started believing him. And so what can we go to the next slide? And so what Ali was able to find out, keep in mind that mailbox that Cat had was stolen. And so Cat called the police. And the police, these, uh, this officer that came to uh, the cat's house the next day after the mailbox had been stolen, right? Louis, Louis says, hey, cat, you should call the police. Our mailbox is gone. Cat calls the police. No, this is a ruse. So the officer that comes to take the report, he doesn't, he's not in on it. He's honestly coming over there because he thinks somebody stole the chief's mailbox. And so what cat and Louis tell um, that, that police officer who's coming to take the report, he wants to know how much was the mailbox worth? And Kat says it's worth over $300. Why is she saying that? Because in the state of Hawaii, if you steal an item that costs more than $300, it's a felony at that time in 2012, 2013. If it's under $300 in Hawaii, it's a misdemeanor. And so she wanted to charge her uncle with a felony and send his ass off to prison. So she said it was worth more than $300. And so um, what, what Ali did was he kept trying to figure out what type of mailbox it was. So he used Google Maps. And if you all have never used Google Maps before, you can go back into Google Maps and you can go back years and you can actually see your own property on there. And so um, Ali went back a few years to see what kind of mailbox it was, got pictures of it off of Google's Maps also collected pictures from fam family gatherings. You know, he asked Gerard, were you guys ever over at the house? Yeah, do you have any pictures, you know, being taken outside? Yeah. And then some of those pictures was the mailbox that Cat claimed was stolen. And so Ali contacted the manufacturer of the mailbox and said, you know, uh, I want to get a, a copy of this mailbox. How much is it worth? Or a duplicate of it. How much is it worth? And it was worth way less than $300, worth like a hundred something dollars. Right. And so what Ali found out was that the that the mailbox that Kat reported stolen, it was worth more than three hundred dollars. It's not the same mailbox she had on her property. And that's when they, the Fed started really started looking at this anyway. Uh, it went to trial on December 14th, it being what? The charges against Gerard Piranha for stealing the mailbox went to federal trial. Uh, there was a mistrial declared because Louis K. Aloha got on the stand and intentionally created a mistrial. So I'm saying all that to say this. I'm trying to speed up. There's a whole lot more to this, but I'm kind of just giving you guys a refresher course. And if you liked, you know, um, when you see this video up on YouTube, put in the comments column, can you please give us more detail in the upcoming video? And I'll do it. But now back to this. And so um, there's a mistrial declared in December 2014 when Louis gets on the stand and, and intentionally throws a case. Why? Because he didn't want Ali Silver who had already uncovered all this crime that the KLO highs had been involved in, he didn't want Ali Silver to cross-examine Kat KLO High. So Louis was like the first witness or second witness, he, but he was before Kat. And so he caused a mistrial to save Kat from being put to cross-examination. Next thing you know, Ali took all this, uh, you know, the public defender took all the evidence to the feds and said, look, this was part of my defense. Here's why I think what they did was illegal. The feds looked at it and said, gee, man, you're talking about the chief of police? And this high ranking prosecutor said, and that's when all this started unraveling. Okay, so now uh, go ahead, Melissa, and let's click on to the next one. Oh, yeah, and so, you know, so even after they started getting investigated, see what the KLO House was known for doing was threatening people. And so here, this is a picture of Chuck Tuttle. Ch Chuck was the head of the Ethics Commission. He was investigating the KLO House. And what was he investigating? The surveillance video and the cameras and all the surveillance equipment that was on Cat and Louis K. Aloha's house was put there illegally at the request of Louis. In other words, it was unethical for him to have the police department use official Hawaii equipment to, to put all this surveillance stuff at his house, right? Um, and so they started investigating that and other things. And so what did Cat and them do? They sued the, they sued, uh, the Ethics Commission. 
Now, what did Kirk Caldwell, the mayor, mayor do? He didn't back the ethics commissioner, right? He appointed new people to the ethics commission that, that got rid of Chuck Tuttle and his assistant. And they started investigating Chuck at the request of the Kay Lawhouse. Right, which you know kind of raises out like why, why are you protecting them? You know, isn't part of the ethics commission's uh, job is to investigate un, you know ethical violations, and so I mean, yeah, that was messed up. So anyway, um, and 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 let's go ahead and skip through. Let's go to the next one, Melissa. Next, and so that's Grandma. Her testimony ended up getting the K. Lawhouse House convicted. Um, let's go to the next one. They were all, okay, so now four out of the five defendants was found guilty. Uh, the only one that wasn't found guilty, and if you go back and look at my tweets at Real Ken Lawson uh, on Twitter, uh, you'll see back, even back then, I was predicting that Gordon Sharishi, he was the one that would be found not guilty um, because there was really no evidence on him. But the other four, Kat K. Aloha, Louis K. Aloha, uh, Lieutenant Derek Hahn or ex-Lieutenant Derek Hahn and Officer Bobby Wynn, all four of them were convicted for conspiring to violate the civil rights of Gerard Puana. They're still awaiting sentence. So now while all that's going on, let's go to the next one. And, and that's just a slide showing you how much, how much it costs just to prosecute them. Um, you know, the suit from the Ethics Commission costs, you see all that, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars. We paid uh, the chief of police $250,000 to retire. Go ahead and, and, and click the, to the next one, please, Melissa. All right, so now, now during all this time, right, the grand jury started probing in on Keith kind of share on this safe house. Right, Michael Wheat started subpoenaing people back in 2017 to come to the grand jury to investigate this safe, what are you talking about safe house, Lawson? Melissa, can you click to the next slide? All right, so here's what I'm talking about. So this lady named, named Walden and her partners purchased this property at the end of 2013 for $4.5 million, okay? And then the next year, Keith kind of sure bought that property for a safe house for women that were victims of domestic violence to, to live while the cases that, you know, so if they charge somebody with domestic violence, they're afraid to be home. These, this apartment complex, this building, this safe house was to provide her, the, the women and their children a safe place so they could uh, um, be able to prosecute their, their uh, um, uh, the people that were committing domestic violence against them and be able to do that from a safe environment, all right? And so again, Walden and her partners purchased this property in 2013 for 4.5 million. The next year, Keith uh, told uh, one of his assistants to purchase that property within one year for 5.5 million, right? And so we asked uh, um, Walden and others whether she thought there was any particular, uh, anything peculiar with the fellow investors turning a million dollar profit in, in, in such a short time frame. You can go to the next video. I mean, next uh, slide, please. Right, and, and, she, and the lady was like, nah, you know, we didn't, it's unusual, but we didn't find anything peculiar with it. In other words, did Keith and them get a kickback? Or they, did they use this, right? And were they involved in purchasing the property in 2013 with all this being planned? Okay, we're gonna purchase this property. And then once you purchase it, once you purchase it for uh, 4.5 million, I'm gonna tell the city to buy it for 5.5 and we all gonna make some good money on this whole deal, right? And so who all is involved in that deal? And so, you know, again, that's one thing that's being investigated by, by uh, Captain Michael Wheat or U.S. Attorney Michael Wheat and his, his crew. All right, let's go to the, uh, well, no, stay here. So Honolulu's lead attorney is also a possible uh, target. And that's, that's um, Donna Leong, right? Donna Leong is the one, um, go ahead and click the, to the next slide for me, Melissa. Donna Leong is the one who helped Louis K. Aloha get his $250,000 buyout. And with Civil, Civil Beat, our local, one of our local news agencies here, what they did was they sued 
the city and County of Honolulu to un, un, undo the records to show why was this deal with the police commission? The police commission approved that Louis K. Aloha get $250,000. This is after this man had been indicted. I mean, this guy, had, he was, look, the chief of police was under a federal indictment at this time for conspiring to set up Gerard Piranha. Right, at that same time he was underneath that indictment, they decide what they're gonna do is 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 give him two hundred fifty thousand. Man, I ain't never heard of no shit, no stuff like that before. You gonna pay this man two hundred fifty thousand dollars as a buyout, All right? And so, and do it in secret. And so, then the next thing you know, Donna Leon, the head uh, city attorney, got a uh, target letter. And so all that's being investigated. Now, Louis K. Loha had agreed that if he was convicted, he would pay the $250,000 back within six months of his conviction. Hell, it's been over a year, and we ain't seen a dime of our taxpayer dollars back. And so, again, they tell me I got like a minute left. So let me, in, and this this is going to be like part one. Because I'm going to bring you a Miski update next week, too. But I want to continue this. Uh, because there's a lot of things that, 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 that you have to be on the... Uh, look out for when we talk about this corruption going on in City Hall and here in Honolulu. Because if you think that Miski and them existed for all these years, committing all these loud uh, crimes and, and, and right out of thin air and wasn't nobody helping them, hey man, I got a bridge I want to sell you, right? We need to figure out how deep this is going. And, and so again, we'll talk a little bit more about it next week. But uh, you know, you still got Donna Leon. You still got um, uh, this this sale of this building that's going on, right? You got the rail being investigated. Remember, the Fed started subpoenaing these about rail. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about what could Michael Wheat and and his Avengers be doing back here, and also how does that relate to the Miski indictment. Is there evidence from some of these individuals in this Miski criminal enterprise that can also link back to some of our local politicians? All right, so hey, look, I told Jay Fidel, Jay said, hey man, you wanna come and do a law show? The law and law, so I said, yeah, Jay, if you allow me to feed it to him raw, I'll give him the law if you allow me to feed it to him raw. He said, well, come on with it. And so I'll be back next week. Melissa and I will be bringing you the law raw. But until then, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, Professor Lawson saying, uh, have a safe week, wear your mask, wash your hands, and I'll see you next Tuesday.